In this series of videos, we've been exploring how to mock objects during unit testing by using mock K. In this specific video, we're going to take a look at Verify, but let's just do a quick review of where we've been. One of the big reasons to mock is to take us away from the reasons why we don't want to unit test. A lot of times we hear it's too complicated, and the question we might want to ask then is, is it that the unit test is too complicated, or what you're trying to test was written in a way that's too complicated? Many times it's the latter. Another thing is, it interacts with external data, and that's where we can do some mocking. Finally, the point of this video, it calls something outside we want to use a, con a construct called verify. So a reminder what mocking is. In this case, we want to test the service class, and we want to do a true unit test where we're only testing this class and not a series of actions chained together across a series of classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to mock a method in a class that our service class calls. In other words, a mocked method returns some predictable output so that when we make that call, we know what we're going to get in return, and therefore we isolate any changes that might happen in this persistence class, and we're testing just the service class. So, we can invoke our mock method, and then we can also verify that it was invoked. The place where verification comes in really handy is this kind of scenario, where you have a class that's calling another class, and that other class is calling something external. If you step back, a tester might say, well, gosh, I can't test this because it tests something external. But that's exactly what we're trying to work around here. Uh, we don't want to use that as, as a reason why we shouldn't unit test. Instead, what we're going to do is we're still going to test the service class, and we're simply verifying that this call did, in, in fact, take place. Without worrying about what happens when that call takes place, we just want to verify that this call occurred with a series of parameters. So what we can use is something called verify. The default way to use verify is just have the word verify and then an open and close curly. And within that open and close curly, you have the mocked object and a method on that mocked object and any parameters that were passed into that mocked object. Now you can enhance the verify step with these attributes that I have on this slide. You can verify not only that a method was called, but how many times it was called. So verify at least equals three, and the three could be any number, I just pick three, means that this method was called, or in Kotlin, this function was called, with these parameters three or more times. At most, three is kind of looking the other way. It's saying this method or function was called no more than three times, and then exactly three means this method or function was called exactly three times. There's a special case where if you have exactly equals zero, then you're validating that the method or function never was called with those given parameters. That can be very, very handy. There are also a few permutations on this verify. You can use verify all, verify sequence, or verify order. Verify all means all of these methods or functions were called, regardless of order. Verify sequence means that these methods or functions were called in this exact sequence, and you have to be very specific and list out every single method or function that was called in that order. Verify order is kind of like verify sequence, but you don't have to explicitly list every single method or function that was called. Now there's a new feature that was introduced in Mach K 1.9 and greater, and that's confirm verified. Confirm verified is a good way to audit yourself because you're saying, I want to confirm that I have verified every single call that was made on this mocked object, and there weren't any other calls that were made. This is a nice way to make a test very watertight because you're ensuring that a given set of inputs creates a given set of outputs without any wasted calls that should not have happened. So with that, let's jump into an example. First things first, I want a watertight unit test. The better unit tests, the more confidence I have in my software. And I know that that confirmed verified feature was added in Mach K 1.9 and greater. So I'm going to go ahead, update my build.gradle to Mach K 1.9, and then do a sync. The sync is completed, and so now I'm ready to work on my test. I'm going to continue with the test that I started in an earlier video. And in this test, we're starting with given a feed of mocked plant data are available. And you see it comes down here, it says create mock data, and then it goes through something we did in a prior video where we essentially mocked out this plant service fetch plants method with a couple of different returns. So I'm going to add a new then. We'll say then 
verify functions invoked. I should probably give it something a little more descriptive than functions, but nonetheless that will work for us. So let's start by doing confirm verified, and we pass to that anything that was mocked. So alt enter will import, and then what we have mocked, if we take down uh, take a look down at our create mock data function, we'll see that this plant service is what was mocked. So I'm going to say plant service. And this test is going to fail right away because it's saying, did I verify every function that was in, that was invoked on this mocked object was actually called? Well, I haven't verified anything yet, but I know that one thing will indeed be called. And that is when we're calling, um, when search for red button, let's go ahead and look at this guy. When we look at this, this is going to call the fetch plants method on our plant service, but from the main view model, which is the class that we are unit testing right now. So uh, long story short, we're doing this as a true behavior driven design or test driven design unit test where we're writing a test that will fail, and then we'll go back and we'll make it pass. Let's go ahead and run and see what we get. No surprise here, test failed one, Java assertion error, verification acknowledgement failed, verified call count zero, recorded call count is one. So here it's telling us, wait, you did not verify that I'm calling red button. Okay, great, let's go ahead and fix that. So we come back and now let's say verify and open curly. And we'll say plant service dot fetch plants, and we're going to pass in the string red button. So verify needs to be imported, just like we see here. And we'll grab the first one, just like so, and run the test one more time. And this time, take a look. Our test passed as we expected. So we have properly verified every method call that occurred on our mocked object. This was fairly straightforward because we had only one object that was called. Now let's try some of our other vernacular here. Let's say verify, and let's say exactly, because remember we can say exactly, and then we can give it a number, and in that case it has to be called exactly that number of times. So exactly zero, and then open curly, close curly, plant service, dot fetch plants. Let's give it something that it didn't actually call. So let's take a look. Uh, search for redbud returns redbud. We see when search for redbud, we're passing in the word redbud here. Now we go back to our verify. Okay, sure enough, we verified that we passed in the word redbud. But you know what we didn't pass in? We never passed in the word maple. So I would expect that fetch plants was never called with the parameter maple. Let's go ahead and save and try this test one more time. Once again, the test succeeded. So I'm happy with where we are. I'm going to go ahead and commit and push this. Do a quick commit directory, and we'll just say add verify steps to our unit tests. Commit and push, and push. We take a look at GitHub now that this is pushed, and we see that our Circle CI framework, our Circle CI pipeline, is currently running. So let's let this run for a few moments. I just popped over to Circle CI, and I can see the pipeline running, and it's currently on the run test step. Now we've given it a new test, so what I really want to see here is confirm that those tests pass. And sure enough, while I was talking, we see those tests have indeed passed, including the new one that we just added, and we get a green check mark. So at this point, I'm happy with where we are. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.